Marvel's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is suitable for kids but does have harder fights, a few scary creatures and themes of grief and loss. Warning, mild spoilers for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Is Marvel's latest movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, suitable for children? It's been a long time coming, but finally, the MCU is leaning all the way into martial arts, led by an all-Asian dream team cast of newcomers, fan favorites, and legendary veterans of the screen. And while it's PG-13 rated, as are all Marvel films, there are a few key points that parents may want to know before heading to the theater. Shang-Chi follows the titular character, Shang-Chi, Simu Lu, who ran away from his villainous father and his life in China when he was a teenager and has been living in San Francisco for 10 years. He and his best friend, Katie, Aquafina, are just fine living a carefree life of valeting expensive cars and karaoke. But when his father's henchmen show up to attack him, Shang-Chi and Katie, along with his sister, Shaolin, Menjer Zhang, must go back to China to face their father, Wen Wu, Tony Long, otherwise known as the immortal Mandarin and ruler of the Ten Rings crime organization. For the most part, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is just fine for most kids, but a few elements set it apart from other Marvel movies, starting with the fighting. Like all PG-13 movies, the fighting in Shang-Chi is largely bloodless, the graphic nature well watered down. That said, Shang-Chi has some of the most consequential fight sequences in the MCU. The entire main cast of Shang-Chi, save for Aquafina, can actually fight, and that translates to the screen. Combat sequences framed in the wuxia manner are more like fantasy ballets, but the fights patterned after Jackie Chan-esque Hong Kong Kung Fu movies are faster, harder, and more visceral than most of what the MCU has to offer. There's also a flashback scene in which Shang-Chi's mother, Zhang Li, Fala Chen, is outnumbered in a fight and it's clear she'll lose. Her death isn't shown on screen, but there is a shot of her laying on the ground and a young Shang-Chi grieving over what is clearly her dead body. Again, there's no blood, but there may be some questions along the lines of little ones asking if certain characters are okay. Other elements that may upset more sensitive kids happen in the third act when the setting moves to the mythical village of Ta Lo. Everything is beautiful, pastel, soft-focused fantasy, at least until the final boss in the form of a tentacled monster and his flying demon minions burst forth. Kids who have been able to handle other extra-dimensional Marvel creatures in the MCU, such as the obelisk in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 or the Alioth of Loki should be able to handle Shang-Chi's big bat. Same with the abomination in the cage fight scene. But there are moments where the flying demons swoop down and drag characters off, 